Radio Pulpit, 657 AM. Hello, my name is Janine van Nika from Radio Pulpit. And we've been busy with a whole um, theme all about pleased to meet you, Lord, getting to know the Lord better. But this past week, during discussions, and these discussions always end up with you, we were asking, okay, why is it that even though we've got this information, we've got a Bible full of information about who God is, revelation, you read every story, you can see his heart there. Then when we've got to show him how much we love him by being obedient, it becomes hard. Or you find this numbness in your heart or just no motivation, no urgency to do what he says. You know, it's end times telling people about Jesus and yet we go on with life and nothing changes. And so we were asking why. Could it be me? Is it, what is it? What is it? And um, so we were talking about the lenses that we all wear. Your glasses with the lenses. Now anyone with glasses, I can tell you right now, it is pretty much impossible to keep them clean. At this, the moment you put them on your eyes, like so, I don't know what happens. And it all, it's always little by little. It's this progressive thing. And the dirtier it gets, you just squint more, you know, because it's, it's effort to keep the thing clean. <laughs> so the lenses that we're wearing, and then it becomes more blurred and more blurred until you're irritated and you clean your glasses. Um, but we've got the same things, don't we? I mean, each and every one of us perceive the world in a specific way based on our history and our perceptions are what we've gone through in life. Let's take something like rejection. Because we were looking now, why, are, what, why is the glasses so dirty? Rejection. And it was very interesting to see the effect of rejection on the way I see life. Let me start with a word, 1 Corinthians 13, 12. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror, then we shall see face to face. Now we know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. The glasses right there in the Bible. This knowing in part, remember a mirror at that stage was a, was a blurry thing. They literally wiped stuff till it shone enough that they could see themselves. So let's take rejection to understand the dirty lens. When you've been, maybe had a missing father or a father that really was, did not represent God as a loving uh, a father who cared, who helped, who advised, all of that, your father was missing. Or your parents compared you to your siblings and they chose their favorites and you felt rejected. Or you're in a marriage and your husband doesn't love you or doesn't say that he loves you or doesn't show it and you experience rejection at school with teachers, any kind of relationship. Even someone who's grown up in a Christian home can experience rejection. But then what happens is number one, it seems that your world but becomes yay small and it starts focusing on you with rejection comes the lie that number one I'm not good enough and that if I don't look after myself no one else will that's why Christians focus on Jeremiah 29 11 and that God's only got good plans for me uh, plans to prosper me not to harm me and then when they start doing life and that same God takes them through really hard things. The first perception inside is, what did I do wrong? Am I not good enough? Why does God hate me? And that whole perception changes. I literally have a friend. She had an amazing godly father. And when she goes through hard things in life, that's not her perception. She sees it as my God is with me. She says he needs to do this for me to grow. She doesn't take the same thinness, the offense that's in my heart. It's just not there because she didn't go through that specific rejection of a father. So another thing, because of rejection, you, you start having difficulty understanding and expression, expressing emotions. So and, and, and many times misunderstanding. Now we've got the Bible. The Bible is a written book. 
And I've told you the story before about um, Peter and the boat and getting out of the boat and how if you read the story in the Bible and you've got a background of rejection and I'm not good enough, you literally hear another tone of voice. So Jesus says, how dare you? Why didn't you believe if you could just have believed? If you read that same sentence without the baggage of rejection, then Jesus was proud of him. And his same sentence you read, why did you believe? If you could just have believed, you would have seen the honor of God. Like, I'm proud of what you did, but there's more. I believe in you. It sounds completely different from that same background. You see the effect that it has on our lives? What about loneliness? If you feel abandoned, remember the story about Abram and Isaac. Now God tells Abram to offer Isaac to make him a sacrifice. You read that story from a broken background and you cannot believe that God could even expect them. What does it say about God to even have expected um, Abram to do that? But if you know that you know that you know that you serve a good God who's got your best interests at heart, then you read that same story understanding that he had to show in the Old Testament, throw forward to Jesus Christ's sacrifice and show a father going through it. Of course, Abram couldn't have known beforehand what was going to happen. It had to, it had to happen in an authentic way. But if you read that same story from a broken place, you have got a problem between you and God. Remember in Psalms when um, David says that he showed Israel his acts and Moses he showed his ways. Israel only saw his deeds, the deed of Abram having to sacrifice his son Isaac without his ways, the ways of a loving God. And there's going to be a break in trust. People pleasing. That's another effect of someone who had a background of rejection. You, more, you care more about what people think than what an invisible God thinks. Um, and it affects you. If people have an opinion that's contrary to the word, but they're in front of you and you hate conflict, you're not going to put his opinion first. And you're going to wonder, so what's wrong with God? If, how can God not accept those people and accept those people when everyone around you accepts the sin? It, it, it's a conflict inside of you. And once again, you want to please God. Suddenly what you do becomes something you can tick off. And when you can't, you feel God is disappointed in you. Once again, a break of trust. Low self-esteem. It's another one that comes from rejection. If you feel you're not good enough for God to love. Now you read Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the spirit, where it says they, uh, the fruit of the spirit is love and peace and long suffering. All of those ones in a list and you read them as disqualifying you. If you know that you know that you're good enough for God, you'll read that same list and understand God is saying this is the miracle I'm achieving in you. This is the fruit of the spirit that lives in you and likes living in you. The work that he's doing in you. See what we are accomplishing together? Can you hear the difference? The other one, not feeling good enough. You feel that he can't use you. You're not a speaker. He knows what goes on in your heart. He knows what happened at your house this morning. And once again, you're disqualified even to be used. But then the Bible says each one of us needs to rock up a church with a word or a hymn or a scripture or anything like that. And you think, I can't. Or Ephesians 2.10, where he says he literally prepares every good work for you. He prepares you and the good work. So once again, out of your rejection, your glasses is so dirty that you can't see the truth of his heart behind it. Trust. Trust is a big thing. You've got difficulty to trust if rejection was part of your past. It literally affects now, he says in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, lean not on your own understanding. Um, and he, uh, if, if, he, if you roll your cares upon him, he will direct your paths. And you say, but I can't. I can't trust. And the evidence you see that your eye notices in, is based on your brokenness. It's literally based on your brokenness. There's so much more. 
There's so much more in our lives that is affected by where we come from and, and chips of our shoulder. It's more than even a dirty glass. It literally cracks your glass. And I ask God, so am I too broken? Can this be fixed? If, if this is something, it's literally a fight to death to be able to love him, to trust him, and then to love others out of this brokenness. Is it even fixable? And there's quite a few gorgeous scriptures about that. All about, he doesn't pluck a place there. He makes it new. Revelation 21.5, he who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. That's you. Lamentations 3.22, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassion never fails. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Why do we have hope? Because he's God. He's loving. He's all-consuming, passionate God invested 100% in your health, in redeeming, in fixing this and making us brand new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if everyone is in Christ, are you saved? Then you're in Christ. The new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. So, because of our past, our way we understand God, even read the scripture, it's reflected in our prayers. It's even reflected in our faith. It's reflected in our obedience. All of it is affected because of the broken glasses or the dirty glasses, our, our past, where we come from. But we've got 2 Corinthians 3.18, which says, And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. That's the hope. We're not lost. We are not delivered over to the whims of Satan or the world or even our own brokenness. We belong to him and other underneath are his everlasting arms. He's got you. He's got this. And little by little, that's what the word says, from one degree of glory, we are getting somewhere. And when we stand before him, it's not our brokenness that defines us. It's who we trusted in, perfect, holy Jesus Christ and his blood that washes you whiter than snow. Jesus, thank you that you don't leave us where we are. Thank you for paying the price it takes and it took then to free us because in your presence there's fullness of joy and he who the Son sets free is free indeed and we hold on to that with everything in us. We honor you and we glorify you. You are amazing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Download the Radio Pulpit app on your phone and be in contact with your daily companion 24 hours a day.